Okay, so today I'm going to tell you about two things that will be helpful for problem set five and helpful more generally in your study of watershed hydrology. The first is what is a water year? So a water year runs from October 1st to September 30th. So the calendar year, of course, runs from January 1st to December 31st, but there's nothing magical about that. We can have fiscal years or budget years or lunar years that run on all sorts of different calendars. Hydrologists set October 1st as the first day of the new year because it is a time of the year when we don't have a lot of big floods in the United States. And that means that you are unlikely to have a single large flood that gets double counted in um, two different years. So if we are interested in water year 2012, for example, as you might be in your problem set, that is gonna go from October 1st, 2011 to September 30th, 2012. Right? And then on October 1st, 2012, we roll over into water year 2013. So that's the first concept. The second concept is about incremental versus accumulating precipitation measurements. So let's say that on 10-1, it rains one millimeter. And on 10-2, it doesn't rain at all. And on 10-3, it rains five millimeters, and on 10-4, it rains 10 millimeters, and on 10-5, it rains two millimeters. So the first five days of our water year. Kind of rainy in this made up example. So normally in our hiatograph, we would have uh, rainfall in millimeters per day and we'd have our time on this axis, right, days. And so our first day, it would rain one millimeter, the second day, nothing, the third day, five millimeters, the fourth day, 10 millimeters, and the fifth day, two millimeters. And our graph would look something like that, right? That is an incremental precipitation graph or a hiatograph. We can also make our graph accumulate over time. So now we are going to draw our graph again. Actually, I should probably make it taller. And we're gonna have millimeters here and our days here, just like the other one. But now we start out the same, one millimeter on October 1st. But then on October 2nd, it's still one millimeter because now we're adding them as we go. So then on October 3rd, one millimeter from the first two days plus five millimeters on October 3rd is six millimeters. And then on October 4th, so this is one, this is six. On October 4th, we're gonna add 10 millimeters. So the value for October 4th will be 16. The value for October 5th will be 18, squishing it all in here, okay, and so on. So over the course of the year, our values are going to get higher and higher and higher. So then uh, what happens when we get to a new year? We reset things to zero and we start adding up again. Now you have some data that you're gonna look at that is already in water years, so it will reset to zero on October 1st, which is perfect for what you need to do. So if your data is already formatted to accumulate over water years, all you're gonna do is look for the value on the last day of the water year, and you're good to go. If your data is in calendar years, then what you're going to need to do is maybe take out a piece of paper and write down what is the value on October 1st, say 2011. Maybe that is 2,100 millimeters. And then, on, then you're going to look at what it is just before it reset. So December 31st, 2011. Maybe it is 2,400 millimeters. So that means that over that three month period, 
of your 2012 water year, you've got 300 millimeters. And then you can, it's gonna reset if your data is in calendar years. On January 1st, it'll be zero or whatever it rains or snows on January 1st. So then you're gonna look at what it is at the end of your water year. And maybe that is uh, 1900 millimeters. So now you're gonna add together the data from the three months that were in calendar year 2011 with the data that uh, you had in 2012 that were part of the 2012 water year. And you're gonna get a grand total for the 2012 water year of 2200 millimeters. All right, so in a little while, I'll post a video that shows you how to actually download the data sets and look at it, but these are all the relevant concepts you're going to need uh, to work with accumulated precipitation data and water years in problem set five. All right, good luck.